What? Hello? Oh, this. <laughs> I forget. My mother-in-law is probably one of the worst gift givers on the face of the planet. This was a good gift from her. Like, it was awesome. So you should get one. It says I'm bomb. All right. Bible's out. First John 5. First John 5. No dog story today. Just buckle up, buttercup. We got to find those repeated words and concepts, and we just got things to deal with because sin is, hard. sin is fun. Obedience is hard. Sin is fun. If it wasn't fun, we wouldn't do it. Obedience is hard. Let's look for those repeated words and concepts. Let's go. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God to keep his commands and his commands are not burdensome for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that, that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that's overcome the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the son of God. All right, so what do you see? What you got? What? Love? That is repeated in every verse, yeah. What else we got? Commands, Commands. there it is. What else? Overcome. Overcome, there you go, good job. One repeated phrase in here, I mean, you guys nailed those. One that we're gonna concentrate on uh, for our theme today is the commands of God. You can only do two things with a command. I mean, you can either obey it or rebel against it. You can't say, I kinda stopped at that stop sign. Either you stopped completely or you didn't. I was kind of speeding through that school zone. No, I mean, it, it's, it's the law. Like either you obeyed it or you didn't obey it here. And so here we have this concept of the commands of God. And John seems to be writing in circles, and he really does. You know, it's his style of just kind of saying the same things over and over again because he's always reminding us of the three tests uh, to see if we're children who walk in the light. And so there's that love test that we talked about, the belief test yesterday, and then today is the obedience test. That's where we're at. And I've had so many conversations with many of you and, and at other MOVE conferences over the years um, that has created its own kind of obedience test that we really see if we want to be obedient as children of the light to God's commands or on the contrast, if we wanna rebel against them. How many of you want to rebel against the commands of God? Where you at? No? Are you sure? Let me ask you something. Uh, let, let's just let's see. Okay, how many of you have changed this week? Like, there's something in you that has that has changed. Okay, all right. So lots of hands with that. Some of you are like, you're gonna yell at me, so I'm not ye- raising my hand for anything. No. How do you know? How do you know you've changed? I don't ask rhetorical questions. How do you know? You can feel it. You like that answer? Oh, because I thought facts don't care about your feelings. You, you don't know, and I'm not putting you down. Like, yes, yes, there is the Holy Spirit. And, and, and Mr. Solomon told us that a couple nights ago, that there's, there's these three things. You know, there's like the Holy Spirit, there's the Word of God, and there's the group of believers that you have. And all of those things work in, in conjunction with each other. They're all parallel. They all move the same direction. And so I don't put down our emotions and our feelings and, and the spirit that's within inside of us because it, it moves us. And that is a good thing. That's why it's called move, not like stay. You know, it. it It moves us in the right direction, and that's totally fine, except for if that's the only thing that is moving you. Because while we are created as emotional beings, we were not created as only emotional beings. And while you may feel something here, how many of you are moved veterans again and you've had that feeling, you've made the commitment, you've made the, you've made the grand announcement to your youth group of what you're going to do or what you're not going to do and like a dog returned to its vomit, you what? You returned right back to your folly. Anybody there? Oh, so maybe we need to add some facts to our feelings because maybe feeling it here isn't what obedience is all about. 
You don't know whether you have changed this week or not because you have not tested it. That's what we've been saying. There's a love test. There's a things that you do or you don't do to determine whether you are passing First John love test. Same thing with belief test or faith test there. And then with the obedience test, you just can't test that here. You just can't. Is, is there anybody, is there anybody, uh, this one is rhetorical, but let's just say you, you've decided you're done with pornography. Okay, good. This is not rhetorical. Raise your hand now if you're looking at pornography right now. Right now, this minute, you've got your phone out. Okay, nobody? That's because you're, it's easy here. Somebody next to you would slap you. They should slap you. You know, like, yeah, it, it, it's, it's easy here. Oh, but three days from now. And they just pick your poison. You don't know if you've changed if it hasn't been tested. You just don't know it. So you can't say you've changed yet. You've started it. There's a catalyst to it. You've moved in that right direction. But you don't know until, it, until your life passes the test. And that test just doesn't stop. Ugh, one repeated word is obey the commands or that phrase. And so these conversations that I've had just to see whether these tests of God um, or these commands of God are burdensome or not with some of you. I mean, it goes like this, you know, um, that we've had conversations about like obeying your parents. That's, a, that's something that we wrestle with. And so I've, I've heard students say things like, I know God's word says to obey my parents in everything, in everything I do in the b book of Ephesians. Not in some things, not selective obedience of your parents, but every single thing that they tell you. Obey your parents in everything. And here's what they do. They go, I know the word of God says obey my parents, but their rules are ridiculous. They don't treat me like a young adult. They still treat me like a child. All of my friends do this over here. What, what do you mean, but? Deal with it. They treat you like a child. You can't control them. You can only control you. And you're either going to obey God's commands or you're not going to obey God's commands. I know God's word says not to use the Lord's name in vain, but it's no big deal. He doesn't care. I just type OMG. Who are you to tell God whether he cares about his name being used in vain or not? He's the one that gave you your mouth to where you had the choice to do that or not. What, what, what do you mean it's no big deal? I think he's the one that gets to determine whether it's a big deal or not because it's his holy name. I know God's word says not even a hint of sexual immorality, but it's no big deal. It's just on my phone or we're not actually having sexual intercourse over here or it's just a movie or it's just this. I know, it's, I know what God's word says, but it says not a hint, not anything. But I've got an accountability partner that I lie to on a daily basis. Because accountability does not replace your integrity. It doesn't, but that's what we've done. We put it on somebody else. You keep me accountable, and if they don't keep me accountable, then I guess I could do whatever I want over here. No, where does Jesus ever say, if your right hand is causing you to sin, go find an accountability partner, smash your stinking phone? He says, cut it off. Oh, but that would hurt. I need my phone. Fine, keep it and go to hell. I didn't say it, he did. Don't be mad at me, just, just, well, if you don't know where to find it, maybe you should start opening up your Bible more. Does this make sense? I know what God's word says. Do you even really know what God's word says about it? Or do you just follow what everybody else is doing, calling themselves Christians? I know God's word says not to slander or judge, but she dresses so trashy, and all the guys are just staring at her chest, and she's such a, so much for loving one another. I know I'm supposed to hide God's word in my heart, but the Bible is just so boring. It just is. I can't read it. I'm not a good reader. I, I don't understand it. And we make all these excuses. I know, I know I'm supposed to hide it in my heart so that I don't sin against you, but it's so stinking boring. I'll just, I'll read it after I play a little Fortnite or watch a movie. Bible's not boring. You just get bored because you think Jesus is your entertainer. And if it ain't fun, it ain't, then we're done. Can you imagine next year's MOVE conference? If we said for the week, we're just gonna get through the entire Bible. We're gonna cut out the fun and games. We're gonna cut out this. We're gonna cut out extended rec. We're just gonna get, we're just gonna read through the whole Bible. I'm out, that's no fun. Come on. There is no but 
in obedience. There is no one and done with obedience. There is no, uh, okay, I stood under the light, now I'm good. There's no mathematical equation to say, well, I stood under the light, and then I got baptized, now I'm good, I'll go live my life. No, you've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer you that lives, it's Christ that lives in you. Does he live in you? Do you obey his commands? How do you know? I'm not mocking anything that we do here. I'm not mocking it whatsoever. I'm not even questioning your authenticity when you do these things. I think you should participate. I participate. It's a good thing. That's why I'm here. That's why I've been partnered with CIY since I was, a, well, I was a student and then as a youth pastor and even now because I believe in the catalyst. I believe in the way that they, they propel us towards things that are greater. But instead, what we've done is we've started to treat Jesus like our drug dealer. That's what he is. That, that's what we've treated him like. I, I, well, we'll get to that in a minute. There's a youth sponsor. This was so sweet. She's an older lady. She's here. You know, she was at Move, and uh, she's like, you bless your heart, Bob. I just love the way you preach. You just tell the truth. I'm like, well, thanks. I really do appreciate the encouragement. And she's like, I just want to pack you up in my suitcase right now and bring you back home to our whole church. And I thought, well, that's kidnapping. That's creepy. <laughs> you get away from me. That's not kidnapping, that's bob napping. That's, that's even worse. Like for me, it's worse anyway. <laughs> Can you imagine that for a second? Let's, let's just imagine that. Whether it's me or whether it's, uh, you know, your youth sponsors or your youth pastors. Let, let's just pretend. We'll, we'll go with me since I'm a little bob and my, my children are giants and they call me little daddy. But can, can you imagine, you know, you're going home and you just get to pack me up in your little suitcase. You get to put me in your backpack. So the Bob backpack, you know, right, right there. And you're just carrying me around everywhere you go, okay? Because here's where we're at. I think that we love, we love, love, love corporate conviction. We love conviction when we're all together like this. And we love truth being preached at us. I just heard Jason French is going to be here on Friday night. Oh, man, he's like an angry prophet all the time. Like, yeah, we, we love that kind of stuff. I love hard preaching. My preacher gets on me all the time, corporately. But can you imagine if we took the truth that you hear from this stage and here or from your leaders or, or in your small groups or whatever, that you take this truth and, and it's now not to everybody, but it's just to you personally. And so you're carrying me around in your backpack and you're saying, you know what? I, I think I'm gonna make a commitment to eat healthier. I just, I just need to do that. And then there I am. And, and then, then you're at home and, and there's a box of donuts there and, and you start to put it up to your mouth and I just jump out of your backpack. I'm like, smack. And I smack it out of your hand and out, away from your mouth. and like, uh-uh. You said you were going to eat healthier, and you're just like, oh, I hate Bob. <laughs> okay. And then, you know, you're, you're getting ready to, to leave the house, and your mom says, hey, babe, where are you going, honey? Where are you going? Oh, I'm going over to my, my friend, you know, Jillian's house. Why does Jillian look like Billy? <laughs> wait, wait. And then you just lie to your mama. Because you're going over to a boy's house instead of going over to Jillian's house. Uh-oh. And then Bob comes out, and he just whispers in your ear, if you lie to your mom, you go to hell. Go back in there and tell her the truth. Oh, Bob, I hate Bob. Can you imagine you turn on the TV and I slap a what a WWJW bracelet on you? You know, like a what would Jesus watch? Mm, would Jesus be watching that? It's just this show. Yep, but you know, you know there's a sex scene coming up. Would, would you watch that with Jesus? And then I'm just guilty. Like you turn it off. What can I watch then? Newsman Tim. <laughs> That's sinful in itself right there. That's weird. No, I'm kidding. He's good. <laughs> I just give you this constant guilt trip. You get up. You're getting ready to go out the door. You're rushing out the door, and you're going to go meet up some, with some friends and go hang out at the mall. No big deal. Like, you're just going to have a good time. And as we're going out to your car, and you're getting ready to start up, I'm like, hey, did, did, you, did you pray this morning? <sighs> no. I'm going to be late. Okay, fine. Don't pray to your heavenly father. Who do you love more, your friends or Jesus? Oh, I do that kind of stuff all the time. So you go back in and you, dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for Bob. Thank you for the, you know, and you, thanks for mom and dad and my friends at the mall that I'd really like to go see. And then, you, then you're walking out the door and then I go, really, three minutes, that's it? That's all the attention that you're going to give to Jesus today? Huh. You, you don't want that kind of conviction at home. There's no way. I mean, can you imagine when you're snapping that hubba hubba man cake or that hotsy totsy foxy lady and I'm just sitting there looking at all what you're snapping with them. And then they come over and you're Netflixing and chilling and I gotta go like Numbers chapter 25 on you and stab you both kind of thing. Cause that's Old Testament, that's the way it works. Some of y'all are like, what? 
Get me out of 1 John. Let me read that right there. Oh, man, Numbers is my favorite book. There's a lot of counting, but whoo, Numbers 25 gets into it right there. There's some stabbing. There's all sorts of wild stuff that's going on in there. Don't look that up now. This little girl right here, she's writing it down, aren't you? Yes, you were. That's funny right there. Look, she's confessing right now. Tonight, you can repent of your sins right there. I'm kidding. No, it's all good. I'm just kidding with you. You're, you're totally funny. I just saw you like you were watching me, and then like, whoop, whoop, whoop. I was like, read it. It's my favorite chapter. Okay. You don't want that kind of monkey on your back, though. Would any of you really want that? But you don't mind it in here. You can put up with it in here. Why is that? Because you want to keep the monkey on the stage. You don't want the monkey on your back. And then you just start translating it. Yeah, you want the Holy Spirit here to lead you to go and do things, but you don't necessarily want the Holy Spirit leading you when you go out there. There is no crying test in 1 John. There is only an obedience test. And so those tears better be leading you to action. And if you don't have a specific plan and you don't have a specific day that you're gonna get started three days after a commitment is made, if you have not started it 100%, you will not do it. You will be one and done. You got three days. You got today, tomorrow, and then you go home. What are you going to do different? You better start it right now. What's the plan? Stop treating Jesus like your drug dealer. Stop making the grand announcement about your changes. And then, you know, you, you don't actually have a plan. You're not even asking for a plan. You're not listening to everybody. You're saying, I can handle it. I got it. No, you're, you're treating him like a drug dealer. And, and then when you get all wrapped up in your chains and, and, and it's convicting you and you're, and, you're, and you're burdened with your sin and everything, then all of a sudden you, you're like, I, I just need CIY. I just need to go to move. No. No. The same Holy Spirit that is here dwells within you there. You're choosing not to obey the commands of God because you feel like they're too burdensome. Or maybe if it's, not, if it's not your drug dealer, then you treat Jesus like your dog. And it's like, Jesus, I just need a warm hug. That's all I need from you. Or he's your maid service. And every time you sin a little bit, it's like, oh, Jesus, I just made a mess. Can you please follow me and clean this up for me? You treat him like your butler, like he has to serve you. You treat him like Santa Christ. Jump up on his lap, ask him for what you want, and then you run off to go do what you want, and he's sitting there going, but wait, I've got answers. I wanna talk to you, I wanna speak. And we sit here and say, God doesn't audibly speak anymore because we don't wait around long enough to listen to what he has to say. Come on now. We sit here and your youth pastor's probably gone through study after study about your identity, but you refuse to stop changing Jesus's identity. He, that's why he says, people call me Lord, Lord, but I don't know them because you're not taking the time to get to know him. You're trying to transform his identity into something that he was never meant to be. He's not your dealer. He's not your dog. He's not your maid. He's not your butler. He's not Santa Christ. He is Jesus. And he says that if you're going to come after me, you've gotta take up your cross. He says, I've been crucified, or Paul said, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I that live, it's Christ that lives within me. And Jamie was a big help with this yesterday, wasn't she? She was fantastic up here. It was phenomenal. I love that kid. And any of one of you would have done the same thing, like, you, you, like you're there, you're holy, you're perfect, but you're letting other people speak into your life to say that you're not those things. And Jesus says, hey, I need you to stand firm. I need you to be obedient to me in everything that I've asked you to do. And so he says, stand firm with me, be crucified with me over here. But this is hard. Obedience is hard. Sin over there is fun. Oh, 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 my youth pastor's coming. Okay, good. And that's so drawing, isn't it? It's shiny. It's good. And we create this false line. And here's what we do. We, we, I mean, Jesus says, stay over here. Come on, I got you. But, but, but we... We don't want to cross this line. It's a fake line that we, that we make in our head. We don't want to be over here and be too bad because then we're going to hell. No, 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 no. We don't, want, we don't want that. But we don't want to be over here because this is going to require us to change instead of changing Jesus. He is who he says that he is, and we are who he says that we are. And this is what he said that we are, crucified with him. But, but... 
And so we allow these things over here that you're not distracted with here at move. They're all waiting for you right back at home. You say you've changed, nothing at home has. And so then you, you don't want to be over here. No, 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 this, this is bad. This is going to hell. You don't want to be over there. So if we could just stay like right here, if, if we could just walk the line, we don't need to be Moses. We don't need to be Peter. We don't need to be, you know, Mother Teresa or anything. We, we, we just need to be right here. And when we need Jesus, he's over there. I'll see you next summer at Move. And we just walk this line right here. Either you obey them or you don't. Selective obedience is really rebellion. That, that's all that it is. And so you, cho- you choose the contrast today. And when you walk the line, the line starts walking you. And you know this feeling when you make the grand announcement and then it just starts choking the life out of you. You know the feeling of like after three days and you don't understand why this isn't working, why you don't have the feelings, why when your accountability partner is saying, hey, how you doing? You're saying fine and you're not telling the truth even though you were confessing here and it just gets you all tangled up and then your response is, is I need move, I need more drugs. <sighs> Come on, life has to be better than this. Jesus Christ did not die on the cross just to be your get out of hell free ticket. He didn't do it just for that. Yes, it is our salvation. Yes, he stands in front of us. Jesus Christ also died to be our ethical standard of living. He, he, this is the way that we're supposed to live over there, not wrapped up in here. He died to set us free. He died, and you've got to change your definition of freedom. You think freedom's getting to do what you want, when you want, and, and to finally be out from underneath your parents' thumb or whatever that is. That's not real freedom. Freedom is being unshackled. Freedom is definitely being enslaved. Freedom means that, yeah, you still have free will. You can do what you want, when you want. And what I want to do is follow the one that unshackled me. See, his commands aren't burdensome. This is burdensome. And yet some of you, internally or even verbally, You'll sit here and you'll say things like, you know what? I'll just tell myself I can handle it. I've got this under control. I won't do it again. And you think mere willpower is what it's going to be. I can handle it. I can handle it. I can handle it. And again, God's word never says to handle your sin. You were never meant to handle your sin. That's not your job. You've already proven you can't handle your sin. And you know that you can't. That's not your job. That's his job. Jesus knows you better than you know you. He knows what you can handle. He knows what you can take on. And he knows what he needs to take on. And that is every ounce of sin that you have. So what are you saying, Bob? I just got to walk around sinless? Yes, because you're holy and perfect. I can't do that. Well, you don't even want to try. You don't even want to step over here. This is is easier. This keeps friends. This makes sure that you stay on the popularity chart. And once you start putting it me, 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 you forget all about this. Stop changing Jesus's identity. Sin is fun. Obedience is hard. He doesn't want to punish you. He wants to protect you. He doesn't want to shackle you and burden you with his commands. He wants to set you free, real freedom. And you ask anybody that's thrown these shackles off, and they tell you that this life over here is much better. I might be killed. I might be called to ministry. I might have to change all of my college plans. I might have to do this over here. I might, I might have to go to, you know, some foreign country and live in a mud hut. I might have to go and actually talk to my friends about Jesus. I might have to give up and smash some things or cut off the things that are, that are dragging me down. But this life is so much more free. Just sin is fun. Obedience is hard. Every moment, every day, obey Jesus. It's just as simple as that. I wish I could say something else to it. Today is July 19th. November 19th starts Thanksgiving week. Oh, that's a good week right there. If you've changed, then you message me on social media. I won't respond because I'm old. You message me then and say, hey, I'm just letting you know. I'm still throwing off those chains. I'm just letting you know I'm taking up my cross over here. I'm letting you know that I'm holy, that I'm perfect. 
because of everything that Christ has done for me and I want to obey him. And you show me, you tell me in four months of how much better it is to throw this off and to take that on. Then we'll know you're just getting started. Sin is fun. Obedience is hard. Come on, guys. Obey Jesus. You got it.